I'm sure many of us are aware of what happened to Junko Furuta. It is a truly disturbing case that still haunts many people to this day, and she was never given proper justice. But I'm not here to talk about the horrible things that she's went through. There's plenty of videos and studies of that already. I'm here to talk about the criminals who did it, and more importantly, where are they now? And man, I discovered some interesting things. Despite the shockingly savage nature of the crime, the identities of the four main criminals had been protected due to them being minors at the time. Some media outlets, however, did decide to publish their names, that being the Shukan Bunshin magazine at the time, on the grounds that due to the severity of the crime, their identities should not, in fact, be protected. The main criminals were Hiroshi Miyano, now Hiroshi Okayama, Joe Agura, now Joe Kamasaku, Nobuharo Minato, now Shinji Minato, and Yasushi Watanabe. So as you can see, most of them had changed their names to protect their identities. Rather than pleading guilty to murder, all of the criminals pleaded guilty to causing bodily injury that resulted in death. The four criminals were tried as juveniles but had to be convicted as adults. Unfortunately, each of them were already released from prison. The justice system in Japan completely failed Junko and her family. On a side note, many English sources claim that Hiroshi Miyano liked Junko, but Japanese sources state otherwise, that the boys didn't know Junko at all. They would prey on young female students pretty often. Hiroshi Miyano, who supposedly ordered the capture and torture, was sentenced to 20 years in prison, which is the highest sentence in Japan after life in prison and the death penalty. Nobuharo Minato, now known as Shinji Minato, was sentenced to 9 years in prison. Joe Agura was sentenced to around 8 years in prison, and Yasushi Watanabe was sentenced to 7 years in prison. Unfortunately, many other boys involved in the case in which their names were not published did not face any consequences. Since they were teenagers at the time of the crime, their youth was linked to their light sentences, though it is widely believed that their connections to the Yakuza also had something to do with it. This often leads the question as to what are these four criminals up to nowadays? What happened after all the atrocities were committed? I'm here to shine a little more light onto that question. Beginning with Hiroshi Miyano, who had the longest sentence. He since changed his last name to Yokoyama. Even just typing either of his names into Google, the Junko Furuta case immediately appears. So he changed his name pretty much for nothing. The criminal mastermind of the crime was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Hiroshi reportedly has a brain tumor in his frontal lobe, possibly linked to psychopathic tendencies. It didn't come as much of a surprise when this was discovered at the trial after his brain scans were conducted. This part of the brain is involved with self-control and judgment. Brain abnormalities are not uncommon in psychopaths. Once Hiroshi was locked away in prison, his family sold their home, and Hiroshi's mother allegedly sent Furuta's parents 50 million yen, which is around 400,000 in US currency. After his release in 2009, he managed to secure a wire fraud job, supposedly because of his prior gang affiliations and connections. But then he was arrested for it in 2013, because there's many reports that he was receiving a lot of money from this wire fraud job. Once he was arrested, he apparently remained silent and unwavering during interrogations, and was released due to a lack of evidence. He also got pretty active with judo and kickboxing, and went by other small aliases to hide his identity. It wasn't just in the gym, Hiroshi would have his friends call him K in private, and would even have his name as K in matches. He even wrote his name simply as K on his resume. Is it even legal to do that? Anyway, from what it seems, Hiroshi is still trying to escape his past crimes, staying under the radar and such, while at the same time living a con man lifestyle that's bound to catch up to him. Doing his best to hide his identity, considering a single Google search will bring up what you did to Junko, but in reality, he will never be able to escape the things that he's done, and the people over at 4chan won't allow that to happen either. Moving on to the next boy, we have Joe Agura, now Joe Kamasaku. In court, it was revealed that Agura's father started saving money for compensation to Junko's parents. Despite Junko's parents' refusal to accept it, Joe Kamasaku was released in August 1999, where he supposedly was married and then divorced. He reportedly became involved in the gang life once again. He learned some IT skills in prison, but was fired from his job once people found out about his involvement in Junko's murder. 
But what's weird to me is that the fact that he was adopted by a supporter after being released from prison in 1999. Yes, these clowns had supporters, so he took the family name Kamasaku after he was adopted. In May 2004, at age 31, Kamasaku was arrested for the attack and abduction of a man who was supposedly involved with his girlfriend at the time. During the attack, Joe Kamasaku boasted that he had already unalived someone before and that he knew how to coerce the police and the prosecutor. He was given a four-year sentence and was released again in 2009. Many reports also state that Kamasaku's mother vandalized Junko's grave because, quote, she ruined her son's life which is just a horrible thing to do. Kamasaku's father's savings, originally meant for Junko's parents, had been consumed for luxury items instead. The money had been used by Kamasaku. Kamasaku had bragged about torturing, R-wording, and unaliving Junko Furuta in front of other criminals that he knew, and claims that he learned how to deceive the police and could get out of the prison if he ever found himself there again. The victim and Kamasaku also reportedly lived in the same apartment. A man who has no remorse for what he's done in his past, and continues to brag and boast about the things that he's done. Moving on to the next criminal, we have Yasushi Watanabe, who served an indefinite seven-year prison sentence for his involvement. He was released in 1996 and hasn't reportedly committed any other crimes that we know of. Yasushi Watanabe became one of Japan's Hikikomori, which are shut-ins who completely isolate themselves from society. Those who are called hikikomori often suffer from severe social withdrawal and a total withdrawal from society, doing their best to separate themselves as much as possible. This is considered a very unhealthy means of living. Going on for months and even years without social interaction, and I couldn't gather too much information on him after that. Needless to say, Watanabe has stayed under the radar for many years with no reported crimes under his name. Moving on to the next criminal is Shinji Minato, who was previously named Nobuharo Minato. What's interesting about Shinji is that he has an active Twitter account, or X, whatever, yet he doesn't have very many fans on there. Because his parents supposedly had ties to powerful groups, they did their best to protect his public reputation at the time of the crime. They owned a newspaper company that would misconstrue the case and even try to put the blame on Junko. But nowadays, he tweets very frequently about news events, Japanese and worldwide, such as NATO, Bill Gates, and the Japanese Constitution, but also conspiracy theories and things of that nature. But when people comment about Junko, he simply ignores them. I don't know how, since all of his comments are about Junko. He receives constant hate on a daily basis. He also had a phase where he was posting weird photos of his feet and complaining about his feet pain. Like, a lot of posts were showing his feet, so there's got to be a, a, a kink going on. On August 19th, 2018, Minato repeatedly beat a man with a baton and stabbed his neck with a knife. This took place inside Thomas City, and he was arrested for it and put on probation. Looking at his Twitter posts, he's a very paranoid and unhinged man, scared that government agents are trying to get him. And he's a strong believer in all types of conspiracies. In a deleted tweet that was found through the Wayback Machine, he states that he's a grown man now and he's matured from his youth and that he recognizes the bad things that he's done. I'm not sure if he's asking for sympathy, but no one cares. In another post, he even calls it a shameful incident. A shameful incident. The fact that he's trying to victimize himself is just insane. Shinji Minato also has an abandoned YouTube channel that he's mentioned on his Twitter account before. I did see the YouTube page, but there's really not much worth mentioning on there. Safe to say he's just an old miserable Twitter addict who's obsessed with conspiracies and he has tons of feet pics on his Twitter and he gets constant hate. He's just an absolute germ of a human. But yeah, that's all there really is to say about Shinji Minato for right now. There were dozens of boys who were involved in the disgusting acts against Junko Furuta. Needless to say, the unforgivable things that they've done to Junko will continue to haunt them forever while people around the world continue to demand justice for her. It has been more than three decades since the unfortunate incident which resulted in the loss of Junko's life. People still remember Junko as the kind, bright, and gifted girl that she was.